And thank you for joining us for Fox 4 News at 5. I'm Nadine Giannis. We are tracking the impacts of harmful red tide algae blooms as they continue to creep into our southwest Florida waterways. We're talking from Bonita Springs all the way up to Inglewood, where we're seeing blooms pop up on our shorelines, causing fish kills and those images that we're seeing, and it's actually making it hard to breathe for some of us. Let's go ahead and bring in our Fox 4 comprehensive team coverage with meteorologist Andrew Shipley tonight. And Andrew, you're tracking where these Southwest Florida blooms are popping up as we speak. Yeah, absolutely, Nadine. And uh, we did get some latest data just yesterday uh, showing us where we are seeing those highest concentrations of red tides. So let's walk you through the map here. Uh, up in the Venice area, that's where we're seeing high conditions, high alert conditions uh, for red tide. You notice it dips off a little bit towards angle, but still in that medium zone and then picks back up near Boca Grande and kind of that mixture of high to low concentrations from Boca Grande down through St. James City off of Sanibel, off of Captiva, uh, where we continue to see the highest levels right now of red tide. Now we're also uh, seeing uh, levels of red tide near Marco Island in the medium range. So what is this all mean for you? Well, if you're anywhere uh, from that uh, very low to high concentrations, we're watching your health alerts for you. And the more you get towards that high range, well, that's when you'll notice that discolored water, fish kills, respiratory irritation, very similar to what allergies. Now you get off the beach, that will, conditions will lessen for you, but you still need to love the water, probably a face mask. And if you live there, keep that air conditioning running, Nadine. All right, Andrew, thank you. And one of those areas under that red tide warning that Andrew just mentioned is Sanibel Island. That's where we continue our team coverage with Fox 4's Yvette Sanchez. And Yvette, you actually saw these effects firsthand today. That's right, Nadine. Obviously, right now, I am not on the island. I am actually on the causeway. But earlier today, we were talking to uh, a conservationist with the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation, and we were at their marine lab, and actually, we didn't have to go far. Right there on the dock, we were able to see some of those fish kills from the red tide, and a conservationist with the Sanibel Captiva Foundation, Matt DePaolis, adding his perspective about just how harmful this is, saying it's not that red tide blooms are not normal, but he says with the storm the size of Hurricane Ian and all of the storm surge, then you had Hurricane Nicole. Now with the dry season starting, when you factor in salt levels in the water, this red tide warning is having a much bigger impact. Some Vibrio and some other sepsis issues that happen when you get a cut in this water. And that's all a direct result of all the effluent and stuff that is washing off into shore. And now that's all accumulating in a red tide that we're just starting. De Paola says while there are minimal improvements to the water, it's still not safe to go in. So that helps us understand it a little bit more. And coming up at six, I'll have more on what they've done on the island and the actual tools that they lost during Hurricane Ian that actually helped them measure the red tide. But for right now, live on Sanibel, Yvette Sanchez, Fox 4. Yvette, thank you. And so from Yvette near Sanibel, we're going to go back to bring in Fox 4 meteorologist Andrew Shipley, who's now going in depth on this to show us how red tide actually forms and what makes it to our shoreline. So I wanted to break down what red tide is for you. So in case you're wondering, red tide is harmful agro blooms, and that really it comes from microscopic algae called K. brevis that grow out of control. So usually this happens in the Gulf of Mexico and then pushes towards our coastal waters. And really, why does this happen? Well, just excessive natural and man-made nutrients. So I made this graphic to kind of walk you through it. So a lot of times, red tide actually starts to form in the summer months and this is because we are looking at those southerly winds causing upwelling and that upwelling increases those natural nutrients that we usually see offshore in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. That's actually in fact where red tide forms. It feeds on those nutrients and starts to grow. But what happens in the summer months Well, we start to get more of those southwesterly winds and storms like we had with Hurricane Ian that push that red tide towards the coastline and even those 
afternoon showers and storms that happen well just pretty much daily during the summer that increases runoff which increases nutrients closer towards our coastline and then that red tide feeds on that as it pushes closer towards our coastline and eats that runoff nutrients as we get in towards this time of year but as we get closer towards winter and like fronts we've just had that starts to move in switches our winds starts to break up that red tide now the other thing we see in the winter months is that die off because no new nutrients from the dry season as well in fact red tide deals with disease we'll continue to follow the latest on the red tide for you that coming up and make sure you do stick with us here at Fox 4 for everything you need to know about these harmful blooms on fox4now.com. There you can find all of our reports and you can also stay up to date on our social media.